the secondary and the second obedience is to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever obeys me obeys allah and whoever disobeys me disobeys allah so for the muslim individuals and for the muslims in a state the first obedience is of allah and the second line of obedience is of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then after the first and the second is in this verse allah is explaining after the first and the second line of obedience the third line of obedience will be of those who have been invested with authority from among the muslims themselves and here allah is calling them as ulil amr who are the ulil amr they can be the muslim religious scholars the thinkers the political leaders administrators judges of the law courts the tribal chiefs and likewise so what in this verse what allah is basically saying that after obeying the orders and the commandments of allah and his messenger as the primary and the secondary priority the tertiary priority will be to obey the ulil amr and this will be provided only number 1 when they are from among the muslims and number 2 when they themselves are obedient to allah and his messenger that is they themselves are doing what atiullah wa ati rasul then only will be the ulul amr be obeyed there are so many traditions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which explain the concept in a greater detail Bukhari and Muslim a uh, hadith is narrated that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that it is obligatory on a Muslim to listen and to obey the orders of those invested with authority whether he likes it or he dislikes it our liking or disliking is actually not important whether he likes it or dislikes it provided that it is not sinful however if he is if he is ordered to do a sinful thing he should neither listen to the ruler nor obey their orders so this is the concept and this is the primary and the secondary and the tertiary orders of obedience and the merits how we have to go about the obedience uh, of the ulil amr then in another hadith of bukhari and muslim prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said obedience to anyone in a sinful thing is forbidden obedience is obligatory only what is right so what allah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do not say is right and quran and hadith says is a sin will not be obeyed similarly there is another hadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which was reported in muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there will be rulers over you there will be rulers over you who will practice right things as well as wrong things in such a case whoever protests against the wrong things shall be absolved from the responsibility and whoever dislikes the wrong things also shall escape the punishment but whoever approves of and follows them follows them what the wrong deeds of the ulil amr whoever approves and follows them shall incur punishment the companions asked should we not fight against such rulers prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered no not as long as they offer salah then in another hadith reported in muslim prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said your worst rulers your worst rulers are those whom you hate and who hate you whom you curse and who curse you the companions again asked then should we not rise against such rulers prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered no not as long as they establish salah not as long as they establish salah among them among you so this is the basic mannerism we are supposed to in an islamic in an islamic state go about the preferences and priorities of obedience first being allah the second line of obedience being the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and third line of obedience being the obedience of the ulil amr and this has been conditionally explained according to the hadith